All right, so here we are once again. The leaves are starting to fall. Yep, we're at the end of August, August 30th or 29th. And what I'm gonna do today is carve a pumpkin totem. I uh, am kind of late on the pumpkins this year. I usually start them at the middle of August, but I'm not gonna carve too many this year. But this one's gonna be one, two, three pumpkins in one pole. Here's uh, still MS-70. You guys can carve these pumpkins with your normal bar. This is just a normal steel bar here. You don't have to have a carving bar, but I do suggest a little carving bar like that. See how thinner the tip is? This is for the very beginning chainsaw carvers. And another thing too, if you are a very beginning new chainsaw carver, safety, wear your chops, uh, hearing protection, eye protection. Um, this is where you can make money. I'm not, my pumpkins, I've done some really nice pumpkins over the years, like smooth and glossy and really nice shape and they look like they're just really nice. The pumpkins that I'm doing this year are just quick cut, carve and ship out. I don't know if I have orange paint to paint them, but um, there's nothing to this. Just when you get into chainsaw carving, for the very beginners, think about um, safety because it's so important. This chain, you know, this will cut you. This will send you to the hospital really freaking fast. So I'm going to get my chops on here and um, well, I'm just going to get to it. So the first thing, stand by. The first thing, you got your center of the wood here. I see where the cracks are coming out. Like there's cracks all over the place here. So this is pine I got up in Merritt from my buddy Dave and Rose. My friend's Dave and Rose's place. So I just go like this, all right? So this is going to be your stock piece that sticks out, this part here. I don't make mine too high. You can make yours as high as you want because I got to remove all this. I got to do cut, 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 cut. And then you got to do the cuts here to make this wood pop off. Then you'll be left with this. You can also not even do all these cuts. You could dig a hole down here with a die grinder or a spade bit or something with a drill, carve a hole in here, and then you can glue a stick in here, and then you can make your stock come way up if you want. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to put my chops on, um, earplugs in, and we'll get cutting. <laughs>
All right. So that's just how easy it is. Thing still filming. So I kind of rounded off the top. This is point. That's that uh, beetle point where the beetles killed the trees. I guess they call it. I don't know if that's supposed to be blue in here, but whatever. So here's pretend this is a jackalope or whatever a pumpkin where you can take this cap off and put a light in there. So that's all I did with this. Now. I got to see how many pumpkins I can fit in this piece. So where's a pen? Always kick the debris out of the way or do whatever you got to do. So we'll have, yeah, we'll have three pumpkins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on this. Um, I'm going to screw it to my jack stand there. My hydraulic jack stand and um, so I can lift it up and don't hurt your back like I said safety is so important and just do whatever is comfortable for you right so I'll get this up there and then screw it on and I'll be back okay so I got it to the uh, hydraulic jack so all you do is just draw your lines where you want to do your pumpkins my lines are always I can never I'm always rushing especially when I'm doing these pumpkins but Keep in mind safety. Okay, so that's there. There. So all I'm going to do now is cut around these lines. Right? I'm going to do one cut center. Well, I could go like this and like this, but I'm just going to do one cut. Not too deep, about that deep. The deeper that you go, the rounder that you can make your pumpkins look. So, I'll just show you. Remember, you still got to take all this surface crop off so make sure you cut deep by the time you cut this off you still got depth in there hope I'm not rushing too much Okay, so I just noticed some rot here. This is all rot rated here. That's okay. You just got to carve deeper. We can always make this the backside of the pumpkin too. So I'll get this, uh, you know, I really should have cleaned up the wood first, like the outside of it, like you just saw me doing. But anyways, now I'll uh, jack it up. Then I'll do the second cut down there to separate. So you got one, two, three pumpkins. Okay, so I got most of it cleaned up. I didn't clean up over here because that's where the screw is. I'm going to pull these two screws out now and spin it so this rot stuff can uh, 
it goes pretty deep inside here so there's no sense trying to cut it all away or you're not going to be left with no backside of the pumpkin you know it didn't start up here it's probably i don't know about that deep in there so i'll spin it around and then uh i'll be back okay so at this point of the carving i'm not really trying to make sure everything's clean because we still got to do our cut lines um I, there's a little sap pocket here i think this would just might break off all the way right, right down here like i don't have that much experience carving this pine wood um i'll probably have to put so what i do for my what a pumpkin totems i want the center of the face and i also moved it around so the big cracks were not in the front but there's a crack right here but sometimes there's just nothing you can do so our nose then uh eye another eye it's a friggin pumpkin carving whatever just do what you want to do and have fun and these are huge sellers even if it looks like a piece of junk pumpkin like a two-year-old carved it up with a knife it will still sell trust me i think that you make a lot more money carving them fast than carving them good so that one's straight at you so let's see here um okay well let's put this one over here and you can make the face is different if you want sorry 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 so then our nose here oops not a wood spirit nose Jordy come on triangle triangle and then whatever some different kind of mouth This is uh, this pine wood cracks a lot, a lot more than the the cedar that uh, I'm used to using. I think, or maybe it's just this stuff. You know, pumpkins are kind of like they have that round thing in there. So what I do is I find a crack. So this crack here, what I'll do with my saw is I'll go cut. You can go cut, cut. So two bubble cuts, and it doesn't need to be that deep. Trust me, it does not need to be that deep. And we got one here too. So that's kind of into the face. So let's push it over. I, my, I myself don't like it when somebody makes up one of the pumpkin bumps right down the middle of the face. And there's a black line there. Um, so yeah. But I got to sharpen my saw. And um, we'll do those bumps first all the way around the pumpkins. And then um, we'll cut out the faces. So I was just talking to the farmer and this huge branch fell off that tree yesterday of that pine. I uh, know, sorry, that fucking, um, whatever it's called, willow. Yeah, that's a huge fucking branch. He said it sounded like fucking lightning and thunder. Okay, so my saw is sharper. So like, um, I'll just give you an example on this one here. I'm going to lower this a bit. You don't even really need to do these. You can just sand these so they're really nice and smooth and put a clear coat on them. But it's just something I like to do. Gives them a little bit more character. I'll move the camera here. So you'll see there's a big crack here. So you might as well do it where the big cracks are to try and hide the cracks, right? This, uh, this is the 193. So you got that little tiny uh, dent in there. So I'll do that all the way around the pumpkins and uh, I'll be back. I'll say one thing that's good to have when you're chainsaw carving pumpkins, your fucking camping shit bucket. Yeah, have a camping shit bucket, gotta go. 
Okay, so I've got pretty well all those little pumpkin dent things cut in. See it better here. I had to move some around. So if you have to move those around, you have to move the faces around. I had to move this face this way. Um, I'm not going to clean up the outside of the wood yet. You know, when you're doing something like this for the very beginning chainsaw carvers, it helps to clean up the wood with your chainsaw, with the top of your chain. Um, like, for example, like this. Use the top of your chain, scrape it. Because for me, myself anyways, when I'm doing this, I'd much rather be here using my chainsaw than your grinder um, creating less dust. The grinder creates more dust. So that's just, I'm just speaking for myself anyways. So you might see me stall this saw. It's not uh, running very good. I got to send it in for a tune-up. It's a still MS193 rear handle. This saw normally comes as a top handle. It's an arborist saw. And here's your typical still carving bar. It's a dime tip. I want to use this bar because the dime tip will get into these slots better and pop it out. Now sometimes when you're cutting these eyes and nose out and you got the deep cuts and then you're trying to chip it out, like you're trying to pop this whole piece out, pretend if you want to pay attention to where my bar is, you want to pop this whole piece out once you got the outside of it cut out. Be careful you don't snap the tip of your bar when you're trying to pop that out. If you got to pull it, go get a flathead screwdriver and pop it out with a flathead screwdriver. Do that because I have broken tips of these bars trying to pop the eyes and the nose out, okay? I'm just going to give you a quick example what I mean about cleaning the wood up with the top of the chain. So I'm just going to scrape it like this and use the top of it. Just to kind of get the bigger cuts out. We'll pull out a grinder after. So let's fire this piece of shit up. There you go, piece of shit. Ha! So this is what I was talking about. So you got that cut out now. See that? I'd much rather I'd much rather use a screwdriver like your chainsaw uh, thing things to pop that out than break a bar or even chance breaking a bar. See, I could have cut them better, but whatever. There you go. That one's good. So now what I'll do is I'll get my, my bar, turn it on, and um, see, another thing I, I didn't do, why this whole thing didn't pop out, because I didn't cut equal all the way around and cut to the corners.
piece of shit. Okay, so I've done as much carving as I've wanted to do now. Um, I'll sand it later. One, two, three. So now I got uh, black spray paint. I'm just gonna spray in the eyes. Hopefully I have enough paint. You could use a torch too. Um, and I'll also spray down these little lines in between the pumpkins. Like that. Like that. Like that. I'm not worried about overspray because I still got a sand. There's a line. Okay. So, sorry about the filming. There, that should be good. Now, I'll finish painting inside the eyes. You can uh, use a torch to light the paint on fire to um, speed up the drying. I'll get this painting done. Um, I'll dry the paint and I'll start sanding. This piece is going to be lower, so you got to think people are going to be looking down on it because it's going to be lower on the ground. Anyways. Okay, so I, <laughs> okay, so I got it all painted. Now I got this uh, grinder, boss grinder. It's just a cheap grinder with this, uh, I think it's like 80 grit sandpaper on a flap sander. I'm going to run around and sand it the best I feel like sanding it. Um, you can all, once you're done that, you can also get a ow. You can also get an orbit sander and uh, sand it with this too to make it real nice and shiny. But um, I'm not going to go that route with this. Okay, so there you go. That's how you carve a simple pumpkin totem. You know, you can paint this, paint these pumpkins any color you want. I got lots of videos from years ago how to carve pumpkins. It's not a pro pumpkin. It's just a silly pumpkin. If you want to learn how to carve a pro pumpkin, then look up the pro carvers. You know, you can paint this one orange, this one green, one black then the eyes orange it's not the best wood I'm just gonna call this done maybe put a clear coat on it in a couple days and then uh, carry on I got this bigger piece here of Douglas fir I might carve a big pumpkin in there and make it so people can put lights on it so you know like the those little tea lights that you get that have batteries that look like they're on fire that's it everybody there's pu pumpkin totem I'm not doing that many pumpkin carvings this year, that's for sure. More Christmas trees. All these slabs here are going to be Christmas trees. Well, not all of them, but not most of them. There's your pumpkin thing, thing, totem. I'm going to pull this. This is the log that I was talking about. My, this is a piece of wood I found on the beach. Driftwood full of sand. You can see all the sand in the cracks there. See that? That's all sand and little stones in there. So I might pull this out and then just carve a big pumpkin in there. <laughs> Why not? Okay, so here's some carving fusion trivia for you. Why did Jordy Johnson at Carving Fusion show Sugi Ben the Douglas fir pumpkin? Because he could. <laughs> That's it. I might paint it tomorrow. Put a stalk up there. I don't know. That's it.